how to program the Micronucleus bootloader back into an ATtiny85, including on a Digispark board, whether you're starting from scratch and want to implement USB on the ATtiny85, or you had an existing circuit and something went wrong so you need to put the bootloader back in. So what is Micronucleus? It's a bootloader for the ATtiny devices, and since there's no built-in USB interface, when you hook up two of the pins to the USB connector, like on the Digispark board, you get USB functionality, and this allows you to upload sketches from the Arduino IDE over this virtual USB port. If you don't have the bootloader installed, you would have to use an in-system programmer with the SPI pins to do programming. On the topic of the Micronucleus bootloader virtual USB port, if you need to install drivers to recognize this USB port, SparkFun has a page with USB driver info for Windows, Mac, and Linux. I will link this below. The first thing we need is the Micronucleus programming file. So over on GitHub, we want to go to Firmware Releases, and for the ATtiny85, we want the T85 default hex file. So the easiest thing to do is probably just download the zip file and then navigate down to that folder, firmware releases, and get the T85 default hex. We also want to use AVR Dude so that from the command line, we can install this hex file. So Lady Ada has info on this. I will link below. Once I had the Micronucleus programming hex file and AVR Dude files, I put them on this USB flash drive just for convenience so the AVR dude and the hex file are all in this path and I'm going to use Arduino Uno as an in-system programmer to program the ATtiny85 on Digispark with the Micronucleus bootloader from AVR Dude. These are the pinouts for the SPI pins and the pin that controls reset on the ATtiny85 and then 5 volts and ground will come from the Arduino Uno. So to set the Uno up as an in-system programmer, first without this 10 microfarad capacitor we upload the Arduino ISP sketch into the UNO, which turns it into a programmer. Then we add the 10 micro capacitor from reset to ground. Positive on reset, negative on ground. Now we can go to a command prompt and run AVR Dude, tell it to use this as a programmer, and it will directly program the ATtiny85 with the Micronucleus bootloader. If we wanted to just do a standalone ATtiny85, the hookup would look like this. SPI and reset go to these pins, 5 volts and ground from Arduino Uno, and it may or may not be necessary to put a 100 nano or so micro capacitor from VCC to ground across the chip. Depending on the wiring, sometimes all of this can act a bit weird, so I found this helps. Right here, this is just a blink sketch I will use after I put the bootloader in. It's the sketch called Start in the Digispark examples, so that's just open for later. Over in the terminal, this is the command to use AVR Dude to flash the Micronucleus bootloader with the correct fuses for ATtiny85 Digispark into the Digispark board. On our external flash drive, we put AVR Dude there, so we point to this. The AVR Dude config file is also on the flash drive. Our serial port for our Arduino ISP programmer is here. Baud rate is 19200. The programmer is called AVR ISP. The chip is ATtiny85. And the Micronucleus bootloader program file is on the flash drive. And we also want to set low, high, and extended fuses. Low E1, high DD, extended FE. This will set it up so that it will properly run on a Digispark board. On the high fuse, DD keeps the reset pin functioning as a reset pin instead of a GPIO. So PB5, which is reset, is going to act as reset. And that's so that I can continue programming this chip with an in-system programmer for now. If I'm confident that I'm done with all of that and I got a bootloader in there successfully and I only care about uploading sketches through the USB bootloader in the future and I'd like to get a GPIO port back, I can turn this reset pin back into a normal GPIO 
by making this 5D. So here's the UNO as an in-system programmer. Power and ground and the SPI and reset are coming over through this breadboard, jumpering onto the correct UNO pins. 10 microfarad capacitor. So I will execute this command to upload Micronucleus bootloader. And it looks like it was successful. It found device signature that's ATtiny85, reading in the programming file from our flash drive, verifying, and the fuses are low E1, high DD, extended FE. Now I just have the Digispark board on its own with the Micronucleus bootloader put in, and I have a USB port on an extension cable, so I should be able to upload the Blink sketch from the Arduino IDE by plugging this in when the Arduino IDE says it's time. I have the board set as Digispark default 16.5 megahertz, and that's all we really need to set. Then we just upload the sketch. So when it's ready to upload, it says to plug in the device now, and it gives you 60 seconds. So when you plug it in, Micronucleus allows USB communication and the bootloader will allow programming. So it's done uploading. Micronucleus has responded. And we have the LED blinking. That's how we can put the Micronucleus bootloader back into a Digispark or an ATtiny85 on its own if things go wrong. If you can't use this method because this reset pin has been turned into a GPIO, not allowing reset and not allowing in-system programming, you'll need to reset the fuses with a high voltage fuse programmer. I have a video on that I'll link below as well. Now I should be able to recover from any configuration issues with this Digispark board. It's nice to be able to turn bricks back into functioning circuits.